Peter Watt is obviously the best player in the world at the moment. He just went on an insane run, won three FNCSs in a row, had some insane solo clutches and globals, and I'm not going to be talking about any of that or any of his crazy flashy things that he's doing like right here. Instead, I'm going to be talking about the little details that you guys can copy when you're fighting in solos that are going to help you get better. Like little things, like right there, smacking on the water is already 1 HP so he can insta raid kick for the second swing. Then, how he scans the box and gets that piece control in the centre wall, and then how he actually combines using a shotgun shot, the pickaxe, to instantly create a random peak for himself and take out players for the second of the fight starting. I'm going to explain all these little details to hopefully get you guys better at solo fighting, duo fighting, trio fighting, everything in this one video. So please leave a like if you enjoyed. In his last spawn, Peter Watt does a couple really nice things. The first one, this is a big thing this season, it's just counting people's gatekeeper shots. Like right here, this guy uses two of his three gatekeeper shots. Nobody has an extended amount of gatekeeper during an Osborne fight. And Peter Watt instantly uses this against him, right? Knowing the guy has to reload, he does, you know, a bad peek, takes some damage, but he does this so he can piece the guy up and then now does a really smart peek. This ramp edit is insanely good. It basically creates a round peek. It also means that you can't really get hit as you do it. And as you can see, he's able to do this into hitting a pump, cracking the guy, and then just finish off the fight with a 50-50. It is completely fine to 50-50 if you have an advantage and it's not really a 50-50 if that makes sense. I know that sounds a bit stupid, but if somebody's out of bullets, it is no longer a 50-50. It's then a 90-10 and you should always take that in an off-spawn fight, especially when you can just quickly go into your next game. In this next fight, Peter Bot is against somebody over on the forecast tower and this other guy got absolutely worked. And this is all pretty high elo. Like everybody in this game is, you know, on really high points and they're all very decent solo players. And this guy gets absolutely worked. So take a look what Peter Bot does. First things first is he knows exactly where the guy is based on that edited stare, as you can see. He has a really nice play knowing that this guy thinks he's, you know, being a little bit sneaky and he's caught him off guard. What he does is he runs up, holds his pickaxe out, and then instantly pulls out his pump and then does a pre-fight. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't know how that shot didn't hit. Like it definitely should have hit. I think the tree blocked it or it just didn't register something because he was completely on that guy's head which didn't hit any damage but he does a nice play which is looking around the side so looking at that little gap right there to get the floor off on this other player and also knowing this guy has a gatekeeper he keeps up the pressure knowing the guy has to reload always be mindful people with a gatekeeper have to reload their gun a lot if, and you also want to be playing a range if you've got a pump as you can see, he's playing his range right here. Other guy's trying to reload his gun. And he does a really good job of just spraying through all his AR. Knowing this guy wants to go and, you know, change up the layers, not just get fought backwards and try to get towards a 50-50 angle. He sprays forward, cracks the opponent, then gets the piece control, runs forward, cone slide, and now this guy's getting bumped up. It's an impossible shot for him to hit, and he gets taken out. p just absolutely worked that guy on the four cost tower and now it's gonna be completely stacked for the rest of the game one thing that peter bot is really good at is just basically keeping up the pressure as much as possible while replacing people so the first strat that he does for this is basically swing on the wall as he gets set up so he's already got the wall to one hp by the time he's even on it so even though this guy does a good play a nice edit a nice like insta edit to catch peter bot off the wall is already low hp allows peter bot to take it and get the crack in the return and this next play is really smart what he does is he shoots the cone as if he's going to replace it and he just stops for a second he lets the guy think about what he's going to do next lets the guy think oh should i get out of the box should i 50 50 should i try to go for a pre-fire he's basically letting the guy do his play and as you can see the guy does a pre-fire and people almost kills him right there if the guy didn't get that brick stuff i'm pretty sure he would have killed him in that situation then this guy lucky enough is able to get out he uses a dash to disengage so now people has to go ahead and chase him down and take a look at how he chases him down no more pickaxe has been used he wants to end this fight quick he does three orc bursts gets on the wall and the main thing here is the angle swap from up top here where the guy's expecting him to be i swap to this guy's pov you can see he's expecting peter bot to be approaching from above Peter bot's on a really nice angle basically impossible for him to get seen in this situation because of where he's positioned and he's able to get a free kill right there and take the opponent out this next fight is actually probably one of the weirdest solo fights i've ever seen i, I don't really don't know what's going on in this fight so let me just explain it in depth for you guys first of all peter got gets hit 50 and the guy's fighting just some context again is a decent player they just made solo earnings like last week so fairly good but this guy has no idea what he's doing look what he's doing he's setting up and like just doing an edit course just to set up a right hand peak on the other side of the box so he's just let peter bot have a full big pot dies do not do that in solos do not let people heal up for free and while you're moving around angles always keep the pressure up use your spray gun use your ar in this case do some damage and to the walls. Don't just let somebody heal up free. Then Peter Bot does a very nice play, which is instantly realizing, okay, this is a bad peak. He's also blocking this angle here. What's he missing? I'm gonna go from above, gets the double edit, baits the double edit reset to bait the guy's shotgun shot out. Then he does a nice peak. However, for this guy, he's got a 
Sovereign, which is actually a very, like, you know, the perfect shotgun in this situation. Then he swaps up his angle again, which is a really nice play to do. Rather than peeking the same angle, he swaps up his angle, spots what the guy's missing again, holds the wall. Then he does the insta top right edit. He does take a load of damage, and they both sort of trade equal damage. But that's mainly because this guy's using a Sovereign, which has that quick fire. It. Then Peterbot does a really good job of keeping up the pressure on this guy, as you can see, while not giving up a bad peek. As you can see, he's waiting for this guy. He's waiting to see what he's doing. Gets on the wall right here. And this is where I want to explain something. And it's just peeker's advantage in general if you watch the situation as this fight plays out right here this guy has got a right hand window p and he does a couple things wrong and p what uses that to his advantage first of all is he's not close enough to the window to actually give himself a right hand peak if that makes sense he needs to be like here swinging to have a right hand peak he can't be way back here and then swing that's not really gonna be right peak it's a very minor right hand peak but it's not advantage and also every type of online game even at land, there's always peak's advantage, which is what Peterbot uses to his advantage right here. He's left hand jump peeking in. The other guy is way too far back in his box. And of course, because Peter is the one swinging in, he has the peak's advantage. And of course, ping and things like that set up plays into this. But Peter was able to shoot the guy's feet. And also a very nice tip is he's not actually shooting the guy's feet, but he's shooting the guy's like character model, like where the guy's feet should be in terms of the character model. And it's something I'll talk about later on in the video. But learning how the character model works and what you can actually hit is so important for ending fights and just getting free damage where possible. Like right there, the guy's 1 HP. You can shoot anywhere on his character model with a purple pump and you'll kill them. Which is exactly what Peewot does. Then he gets third partied and there's a nice little insta peek, insta armored wall to lie him some time to heal up and not die in this next fight when this guy's pressuring. Bit of a weird fight, but a very nicely played fight by Peewot right there. In his next fight, Pete does a couple of really nice things. First thing he does, he lands up top on this tree right here to instantly catch the scarf by surprise. Landing up top in trees, genuinely is actually a really good play just for getting beams. But also in this bunker fight, it's a very good idea to catch this guy off guard before he can get back into all of his space. Then he notices he's missing his floors above his head, which most people tend to miss when they're reboxing like this and building a lot of space in the bunker. So what Peter Watt does, places the floor and then insta replaces. Not even worried about this guy, what he's going to do, because of course the floor is blocking any type of peak or insta edit that he can do. Takes that floor and then gets the crack. The guy's stuck on that thing right there. He's been a bit of a drone. And then he's not afraid of shotgun placing. It's one thing I want you guys to learn is don't be afraid of shotgun replacing and just 50 50 somebody when you have a HP advantage. It is such a worthwhile trade. It's so unlikely they can line up a max on you. Don't be afraid of just taking a 50 50 with your AR if you've cracked somebody. It's a really good play to do. One thing that Peter Bot is extremely, extremely good at is not giving up bad peaks while controlling the tempo of a fight. So if you guys know what tempo of a fight means, basically it just means how quick and how fast the fight is progressing. And if you're the one who's controlling the tempo of the fight, you have a massive advantage. So right here, Peter Bot is smacking on the wall. And what he does, smacks twice, holds his shotgun out, catches this nut about guy. And just for some context, this nut about guy is actually fairly good. He's got like 600 earned. And Peter Bot absolutely works him in this fight, barely takes any damage in turn. Again, really nice peaks. He's controlling the tempo of the fight by being aggro and slowing down forcing this guy into do some pretty bad peaks and having good movement to catch him off guard. Then slows down the tempo again, reloads his guns, and now this guy has to decide between reloading his guns and, you know, trying to heal up, trying to run away. There's so many things that are going on in this guy's head, whereas all Peabot needs to do is just follow him around, wait for him to make a mistake. And look what happens here. Peabot's used a bunch of his ammo, and this guy actually does a pretty good play, I would say, by taking height and then instantly trying to counter, right? So he's not just healing up, he's trying to counter, get some damage in. And what Peterbot does is just reload his guns. He just slows down, reloads his guns, really basic stuff. Again, such simple things right here. He's walking up to the wall and he's just holding his shotgun out. And also if you look where he's positioned, this is a very underrated tip. This is basically the halfway point on the floor that he's standing on. So if this guy was to come out and place a stair or a cone or something, Peterbot would actually phase it and be able to get a free shot. So this guy was to try to stare him off and piece him up. Peterbot is close enough to the wall to actually phase that stair and make it yellow, basically to get a free shot off and a free kill. Keeps on aggroing the wall, keeps up the pressure. This guy does a nice armored wall. Peterbot instantly swaps the angle, double swing, holds a shotgun out, swing, Guy does a nice insta edit play and catches Peterbot with his builds out. But because Peterbot is crosshair tracking him, so basically keeping his crosshair where the guy is, not hitting the blue circle unnecessarily, means he's able to get the crack in return. And then now keeps up the pressure. This guy has got absolutely no chance to win this fight because of how Peterbot is controlling the tempo. He has to decide between reloading his guns, popping fizz, popping medkits, so many things this guy has to do. And Peterbot is able to get a free kill when the guy gets caught up between his actions. If you guys can control the tempo of a fight and just basically have control as the fight plays out, you have such an advantage. And this goes for defensive and offensive fighting. 
This next fight, Peebot is against somebody who has been playing clearly way too much zone wars and they keep cranking up for heights. So whenever you guys are fighting against somebody who plays like this, it's really not worth just having a massive build fight. Instead, what you do is try to use their high ground against them and basically go for a smart chop out where you can out trade them. So as you can see, he's doing a chop out, places a cone, this allows him to just get a small damage advantage and then take height and he immediately starts aggroing. Again, same technique as earlier, smacking on the wall as he gets down on it allows him to go ahead and get the cone in and the wall control at the same time. And this guy does a good play, which is sort of just dipping out of this fight completely. And Peter Bot re -aggros. And take a look at how he re this fight. He does make a small mistake, I would say, as he gets on the wall right here, is he gets the wall, the center cone control, but he's not close enough onto the wall to actually phase this there and kill the guy instantly. So the guy is able to piece him up. But what Peter Bot does is really smart. Pulls out his pickaxe, Baits the pickaxe swing, like just sort of quick pickaxes. Doesn't even need to hit the stair. Right? He's just sort of baiting the swing. And then pulls out a shotgun to get the trade off. And then, knowing that he's low HP, knowing that people love to spray this season, he just pulls out a shotgun and gets the siphon insta. Again, guys, those pre-fire timings are so important for you to learn. That's how Peter Bot gets an insane amount of kills and ends fights quickly, even when he takes a lot of damage in the fight. In this next fight, Peter Bot is fighting against somebody who is actually fairly decent. This guy had 700 earnings, and he did a very good job of not dying to Peter Bot for a long time in this fight. So you can see it's been going on for a while, but he makes a couple crucial mistakes that Peter Bot takes advantage of. First things first is that wall is low HP, and this guy doesn't have a center box. He's just been spraying through the wall, which means that it's one HP. Peter Bot takes it instantly, gets the stair in, but then he makes a small mistake which is not lining up his crosshair enough and he misses that shot right there. He does a very good job of getting as much of this big pot off as possible and then to sort of prevent this guy and actually full box this guy in, he armors and now he's actually got the guy full box if the guy wasn't to stay in this box. This guy has to leave this box and that allows people even more time to heal up. Of course, he does the correct thing, which is making a two bar on when he's healing. And then he does a really good play. He instantly starts aggroing this guy before he can pop his fizz and before he can get himself a little bit healthier. Instantly starts aggroing, smacks from the top. And then as he breaks the wall, he forces the stair in. Knows because he's forced the stair in, the guy has to rebox. He's not going to stay in that box and break it. So he gets the sidewall control. And this is when Peabot makes another small mistake. He only made two small mistakes. And this other player, being fairly decent, almost killed him for these mistakes. You can see, bad at it, gets pre-fired slightly. But he knows this other guy is wanting to end the fight at this point in time. Let's take a look what he does. Flips his stair, waits for the guy to shotgun replace it, pre-fire, and then another simple pre-fire and takes the guy. You guys need to practice those pre-fire skills because they are so important for keeping yourself alive when somebody's just spraying it. Learn the exact timings. The other guy could have killed Peter if he just waited a second on that spray and instead tried to piece him maybe. But other people, especially in solos, are so keen to just end fights quick when they've got the health advantage. So you need to practice those pre-fire skills if you want to be fighting as good as Peter Bot does. All right, this fight, Peter Bot does a couple of really nice things. First thing that he's doing is he swaps up his angle instantly on this guy by using a dash. It's really important if you can dash at the start of the fight that you swap up your angle with the dash. You're not just dashing you know, straight towards the guy where he's expecting you to be. He dashes past the guy, gets the piece control, gets the guy in the cone, takes his time to line up a shot, and then he gets the guy full boxed as well. Pretty simple fight so far, you can see. And I want to explain something very important that he does in this fight, which is simply... If you're not sure what sort of peaks to do, like there's so many peaks he could do in this scenario that are good, like a top row, a top right, bottom right. All of them would be good, but they're not like guaranteed kills. The most and smartest, you know, just the best peak you can do in most scenarios is just a window peak where the other guy can see you. Main reason being is from this guy's POV when he does this window peak, he can't replace the wall. It's not like a top right edit where you can just hide behind it, replace the wall, and then maybe get out of the box and be a route or something. Instead, Peter Bot has got a perfect you know, max damage shot lined up, his crosshair's in the perfect position, all he needs to do is do a little micro adjust over to the side and hit this guy in his face, which he does. That is such an easy kill to get because he does a really simple edit. Guys, don't overcomplicate your fights. Do simple edits, do simple peaks that are going to allow you to have a good crosshair placement afterwards and it's going to help you reduce the amount of damage you take in fights, you know, because that guy doesn't have time to react to that window peak. And even if he does, people are just going to get siphoned straight after and he ends the fight insanely quick. So he's not going to get third partied by other people nearby. All right, so this is from the finals, and Peter Bot is against two kids trying to keem for the medallion. And he does a couple of really nice plays I think you guys can learn from in this. So the first thing he's doing is playing nice and slow and patient. Just because you're trying to go, you know, for a high kill win or you're trying to kill people doesn't mean you need to be rushing everything. He's playing extremely patiently here, waiting to see what this guy's reaction is. And then 
Ponderilla's in this case sort of just playing passively. He starts upping the tempo. It's very important in fights. If you're playing slow, you don't just continue playing slow the entire time. Now he starts going very, very quickly and he catches this guy completely off guard with a free shot right there. And then he does a very nice side piece, side jump right here. Just basically just using the cone while sprint jumping gives you a whole extra layer up like this. And then he maintains that sort of movement acceleration from the sprint into getting this piece control right here. Gets the full piece on the guy. And because he's already got that free shot off from up in the tempo, he's quite happy to just do a 50-50 edit. Definitely some better edits he could do in that situation, but you don't want to extend the fight that is sending long time. So sometimes it's worth just trading damage. Now he's against somebody else. And what does he do? Start playing defensively. And one big thing is don't be afraid to just waste your splashes in a fight. Like it's such an important thing that you just splash so people aren't just going to try to jump into a box and you get yourself a little bit healthier. Now it gives him some time to get his reloads off, get himself back up to full HP. Definitely worth investing the splashes. And now let's take a look at how he fights against this other player. First thing he tries to do is doing a side peek to catch the guy off guard. And then he realizes this guy is just sitting way up on height. So what does he do? He tries using the fizz to layer up towards him while maintaining his crosshair on the guy at all points in time, which is so important. If you guys are ever going up on somebody or build fighting somebody, always keep your crosshair on them while you're building so you can get three shots off. Like right there, just a free shot. And then he's able to get the layer up. And now he's able to actually take height versus the other player, as you can see. Gets above the guy, gets the high walls with the side jump. And now... He's got the guy where he wants him. He's got the high ground on this other player. He gets all the floors around, and he's not even bothering with a double edit here, which I find really interesting. Like, there's no point to place the cone when the guy's below the stair because he can't actually you know, quickly get this build off. And instead, what he does is he focuses on getting the back walls. So now the guy's four pieced in, replaces that while the guy's trying to edit down. So he gets the cone in the box and then just takes the guy out very, very quickly. It's so important, especially when you're fighting better players, that you learn to manipulate the tempo of fights. So you're not just always playing at the same speed because that's very predictable for other people. Learn to slow down and then learn to very quickly speed up to catch people off guard. This fight right here, Peter Bot gets run out and he gets hit to low HP and he of course wants to kill this guy as quick as possible. So take a look at the peak that he does. And this is the peak that he used during Globals when he went on that crazy solo clutch um, down at Reckless Railways or whatever. It's a really good peak. Basically what you do is Put yourself on this little single floor edit, and no matter where the person is in the box, you have a god peak on them. It's literally that broken. Even if they're like up on a stair or they're like way back here, you still have a really good peak on them. And all you do is just jump peak into it and then quickly reset. It's so important. If you guys are doing any type of peak, you should either be swinging into it like with proper movement acceleration on a right hand peak, or you should be doing a jump peak and then quickly, you know, blocking the angle or resetting or something. That means you always have peaks advantage. You always don't show up on the person's screen, so you can't get hit first. It's so important you guys master those basic things. Just like jump peaks and then quickly resetting. Jump peaks, placing a build are so important to not take loads of damage every single fight. This fight has one of the most important muscle memory things that you guys can practice, and it works extremely well. So he's aggroing this guy. This guy starts making space. And what he does is he puts his cursor as he's placing these cones just below this guy's floor as you can see he's looking just below the guy's floor obviously this allows him to place a cone here but also he's able to get off a houdini cone from like a whole tile and a half away underneath this guy's box and these cones are so easy to do you just need to make sure there's not a wall or like something underneath blocking it and you'll always be able to get these cones in through the box again the muscle memory is just looking like right underneath their space you can do it as you're approaching this way you can do it from approaching from above and obviously you can do it from below really easily but it's really good to do in this situation now what he's able to do with this cone is come forward and aggro with a peak so as you can see from his pov he has protection from the cone that he's just placed and that allows him to end this fight extremely quickly but he of course does some smart plays to end the fight first of all grabs the wall pump gets the cone as well, but he makes sure to hold this wall right here. People are always going to be trying to take this wall back, so you should never try to insta-edit and try to finish off the fight, even leave the edit open. It's always better to hold than actually try to hold the wall. Regardless of your ping, even if you're high ping, I still think you should do this because people are obviously going to try to grab the wall and they're going to be panicking. And then he does a nice top row edit, and this top row edit is so good to do because, as you can see, his cursor right here, is in a perfect spot to just very easily flick back and hit that shot. A lot of edits, your cursor, especially like a top right at an edit or something like that, your cursor gets left in a really awkward spot where you've got to flick back and the guy can easily hide behind something. With this row edit, this guy's got nowhere to hide. Even if he runs up close to the wall, you can always hit a shot very easily onto him and he gets the siphon straight after. Don't be afraid of trading a shot to finish the fight as long as you're doing a good edit that guarantees you hit that shot. This right here is a perfect example of how to set up on walls versus the opponent. Speedbot lands on this guy, hits him a little bit as he drops in. And then what he does is get straight on the wall with his pickaxe out, as you can see. The key thing, though, is he's not dropping down and then smacking straight away. He's smacking as he gets down on the wall. So this guy, even if he was to do it instead, the wall is already low HP, which is very important. Then what he does 
cone cone so he's not actually be able to get boxed in he's always got an escape route as well as a bit of defensive piece for himself you know with these cones he can edit and then what he does pre-fire insta edit the cone it's so important that you guys get ready to counter insta editors with a pre-fire and then also if that pre-fire you know missed by a timing of a second or two you have this cone edited that you can protect yourself with then what does Peterbot do? He scans, he looks for what piece control is missing, center wall again, as well as the side wall out to the side here is very important as well. So what he does, goes forward while the wall is being edited and it's low HP. Always remember whenever any type of build is just reset, like this guy just reset this wall, it's always one HP. So he's able to grab that. Then he gets the wall out to the side here and he does a very nice sort of timing thing, which is pumping the wall. And now since it's a fresh built wall that just got reset, he can just break it with one pickaxe swing. And then what he does, transitions into the guy's space grabs the wall and then perfect right hand peak. So you slow down from this guy's POV. I mean, not that slow, but you slow down from this guy's POV. Look, there's zero chance he can hit Peterbot right here. I know he's joining around and shooting the wall, but zero chance he can hit Peterbot because Peterbot is so close to the wall. It's important when you guys do right hand peaks, you're not right hand peeking from, you know, a whole mile away back of the box like this. I mean, that's kind of right hand peak, but it's much better to close right hand peak, get inside the guy's character model. You can see here it's in the character model and then he lines up a nice max to end the fight. This next fight, Peterbot is against somebody in a full armored metal box. And this isn't the craziest fight to watch. Obviously, this guy is not the best player in the world doing this. However, it's very important that you guys learn how to play against somebody in a full armored box because it is quite a common occurrence this season. So what he does is he gets the wall pretty low HP and then he just stops. He's waiting to see if this guy wants to take it himself and try to, you know, replace an armored. And he's just stopping for a second, letting and letting to see this guy does. And as you can see, because he waited a second, the guy wasn't even holding the wall. It looks like he's got his blueprint out, but because he's actually you know, pencils moving around, that means he's holding the edit on his cone, not actually holding the wall. It's a very simple tip, but just stop breaking for a second and people will oftentimes let go of holding the wall. Then Peterbot gets the wall himself and does a right hand window. And I'm not kidding when I say this, I think the right hand window is the best edit in the game, mainly because the wall maintains an insane amount of its HP, like it barely takes any damage from being edited, drops down HP, so it's very hard for people to take the wall back, as well as it is impossible to take damage through this peak. If you go from the guy's POV, if he tries to run forward and like barrel stuff through here, he has such a bad peak compared to Peterbot. And right window is just such a small edit. It's such a good edit to do. He baits that he's breaking a cone. Then he holds the wall. Pre-fire, insta edit, waiting for the guy to swing his pickaxe. Pre-fire again. Just really simple, just pre-firing over and over. And then finally, he ends up with his six tile edit. And I actually love this six tile edit, especially when somebody's low HP and you've got them full box, like in this armored box right here. Instead of doing a top right hand peak where they can easily just, you know, break it and then take the wall back and place an armor and delay the fight even more. Doing a full edit like this is really good in these situations. Not as good as the right hand window, but especially when somebody's low and they're panicking, doing a full row edit like this is really good. There's no chance they can take the wall and he's able to get a free limb. And also able to chain this into getting even more kills in a second here with this insane all game. One thing that Peterbot is insanely good at is listening for audio cues from So right there, he takes an insane amount of damage versus this other player. And of course, he knows that this other guy has to heal up as well since they both traded a lot of damage. But he doesn't just want to use his fears and go ahead and let this guy fully heal up as well because then the fight just progresses too much. Instead, he wants to re-aggro. So what he does is he cancels the other guy's big pot rather than popping his own heals since he's a very confident player. And then he does a really nice play in a second tier. He hears the guy trying to reload his gun. He also sees him. And then in a second, after he's reloaded his gun with speed mags, he has that timing advantage, he hears the guy reloading again. And if somebody's ever reloading their gun, it is such a free opportunity to just start fighting them. And people does a really nice play here, knowing the guy's reloading. He breaks the wall, shoots, and then grabs the wall. And he's able to take the guy out instantly after the guy had healed up as well. Such an important play that you guys learn is just listening to audio cues during a fight so you can create an advantage for yourself. This next fight, Peabot is fighting against someone who keeps on spamming down armored walls. So he does a really good play. First of all, is he's not insta just smacking on this wall right here. He's letting the guy do his pre-fires, letting this guy do his own thing and sort of playing reactively. And he spots that he's just spamming armored walls. So there's no point just keep on circling the guy's box, him just keep on placing armored walls down and he'd obviously get focused by the server at this point. So instead what Peabot does, he swaps with his ankle, places the cone in from underneath and then he uses this hill right here to his advantage if there's ever a hill or you can actually do this with a stair you can instantly phase into somebody's box all you do is crouch like he's doing here and as you break the floor you stand up so even though the guy's holding his floor as you can see peter Bot yellows it hops straight through it gets into the guy's box and with the edited cone allows himself this nice peak and the guy gets caught completely off guard by that the majority of these fights at this point on all peter Bot is just running around like thanos with siphon coin and a gold gatekeeper and just jumping in boxes but he's doing a lot of smart little mechanical tricks like using houdini cones underneath going ahead and doing exploits from underneath to always get into the box to help him get all of these elims at this point in time 
All right, I'm going to assume the majority of you guys watching this video fall into either one of these two sort of player types. Either you're really good at pressuring and you can, you know, stop people healing, but people just keep making space, the fight drags on. Or you're really good at cutting off space, pre-building angles and things like that, but you don't keep enough pressure up so people are able to just heal up at the same time. And Peabot is extremely good at doing both of these very well. So he's very good at pressuring as well as very good at cutting off angles and things. So right here, this guy needs to pop medkits and storm. He needs to go ahead and pop some fish or something, right? So what Peabot does is he blocks off loads of angles and then very quickly maintains the pressure with the pickaxe. He drops on the wall, pickaxing, going for pre-fires, going for edits out the side. And look at the amount of builds that he's already placed. This guy now has no longer got any options to go backwards right here. So what Peterbot does, swaps up the angle again. Pickaxe, tries to break, cuts off the angle. Really important, you edit that so the guy can't just run through and make space out into this open area right here. Swaps up the angle again, keeps up that pressure. You know, constantly pickaxing, constantly holding his pump out, keeps on pumping and spraying walls to break them. And then right here, this is such a smart play. He's blocked off every single angle that this guy can rebox, apart from out to the side right here. So what he does, just pre-builds it as he's pressuring, as he's behind the peak. So the guy's now worried about, you know, what's Peterbot doing? And he's behind a really good peak, so we can't even counter peak him at all. And he's already pre-built the space out to the side, so the guy has absolutely no options. Then he takes a little bit of damage, transitions around, keeps that pressure up, even though he's been hit to low HP. He doesn't stop the fight. He keeps that pressure up with the peak that he's got. Hits a little bit of damage. And actually really like this play to end the fight. He knows the guy's in a very tough spot. He knows the guy's got no options behind him. He's also only got one build protecting him. So what does he do? He just sprays Thord and catches the guy trying to do a play and gets a very free them. Do not be afraid of just spamming your gun if people are in a bad spot and you're keeping that pressure up because people always make mistakes when they're under pressure in this game. All right, just quickly before we get into this end game breakdown of how Peter was able to win this game, you might actually recognize this exact same play, the exact same island spawn, and the exact same zone pretty much as my last video where I was actually watching the player that I coached and doing a full solo guide sort of breakdown type of thing. So if you're interested in learning how Peterbot is, you know, playing actually all of these things and actually doing it in tournaments like the player in my last video did, Bushy, then go check out Solo Superstars. Quick little promo, but it is genuinely really good. You get 20 hours of coaching every single month from me, Blood X, Razaru, Sven, Zycoma, Resub, loads of coaching, as well as the Solos and FNCS Masterclass, as well as you're going to get guaranteed access to Cheerios Masterclass this year. Peterbot is doing the exact same plays that that guy in that video was doing uh, with me coaching him. So I'm not saying... He's playing as good as Peterbot, but it, it definitely you know has an impact in terms of your ability to make $100 if you know what the pros are doing and you know how to play like them and create those advantages for yourself. So go check out Superstars down below and let's get into this endgame breakdown. This next fight is one of the most important examples in this video and it's just how to defensively fight. So Peterbot gets hit for 120 HP and he starts getting keyed. So what does he do? Exactly what you guys should do. He builds a two by one and the most important thing is he fully cones everything. So he cones here, cones here, cones here, cones here. So these, all these cones, I mean that this guy doesn't really have the option, especially because it's metal, it's got higher HP than wooden brick, can't just break it as easily. This guy doesn't have the option of approaching from above. And then also, very crucial that Peterbot did earlier to somebody in this video, is he gets the center wall control. This is so important that you have the center wall control. I'm a really big fan of this arch edit. You do an arch edit on the right, which creates a round peak. You can also do what he does here in a second, which is making the arch edit even bigger. So now you've got a full right hand peak onto the opponent. And he also does a very nice play, which is just double layering towards where the guy is coming from. So he's got a little bit of extra protection. And this actually very smartly means that this guy can't really approach the box this long side because he has to smack through like one build, two builds, and then three builds to even get towards Peterbot. So of course this guy is gonna start approaching on the peak right here. And what Peterbot does very smartly, baits this big pot, Tries to go for a quick timing pump and then insta armors, which is so important. You do not want to be trying to hold a wall no matter what your ping is in this current season. I really don't think it's worth it. You should always be trying to do insta armors. Then this guy, of course, you know, he's hit somebody 120. He wants to try to end the fight quick. He's going to just instantly start out going the wall. And if you notice, instead of him being on a right hand peak and Peter Bot being not the best peak of all time, now he is suddenly transitioned onto a left hand peak. Peter Bot has forced this guy into going onto a left hand peak. And what does he do? Waits for the pickaxe audio cue. Insta hits him 100 and then insta arm. It's so important you guys get that muscle memory down. Armored walls, you need to place them as you release your mouse. You don't press on a click. You guys are rubbish with armored walls. And then all he does is pops a big pot, knows the guy is in a bad spot because the guy actually aggro towards his piece right here. And all Peterbot does, jumps up, really free kill. The guy's caught in a really bad position. And that's the advantage, I think, of actually just pushing when you're low HP. People don't really expect you to leave your box after being hit 120, even if you've only popped a big pot. And you're going to get a lot of freedoms like he did right there. 
So the first thing that Peterbot does very well as he comes into this endgame right here is he's waiting for a good timing to hit this pad. He's typically waiting for other players to hit the pad near him. You can see this guy's just gone. And then he's going to hit this launch pad, go straight through it and gets into the edge of zone right here. And he's a really big fan of just playing edges. So he can be really active and just spraying and getting a lot of damage. So when Surge pops in a second here, he's what over a thousand above Surge just from spamming people with this AR. And it's really important that you guys are active when you should be, right? Like you shouldn't be active when you're in a really busy spot. When you've already rotated into a really good position, like right here, there's really no downside of being super active, wasting people's builds, griefing people's shields, and just basically making sure you're in a really good position. And also you're playing confident as well. Next thing that he does very nicely is he waits for this zone to pop and now he's going to early rotate towards the eighth zone the main reason he's doing this early is because he wants it again to get into this congested side right here where other people will be rotating against him and of course this is where the partial or the eighth zone is going to play next so he decides to go nice and early he does some true looks ramps up covers his head so he can't get sprayed in the back by these people behind him and then he just gets in uses a little bit of wood to actually get up the hill here and then he gets into a perfect position and of course builds metal it's so important you guys invest metal at this point in time so you don't waste builds and now he is going to be in insanely active literally for the next minute he's just spamming his gun shooting absolutely everybody and doing as much damage as possible to try to find some free refreshes because of course a refresh right now would be really helpful for his overall game and basically give him a perfect you know loadout going into end game with really good mats so how does he find this refresh you might ask he's spamming being super active and he's also just having good awareness on where footsteps are like obviously in an end game there's a lot of footsteps but as soon as you see a new footstep appear like this guy's footsteps just appeared that kind of shows you that there's somebody's coming right into it. and what he does perfectly times it gets the piece on the guy and then very simple takes the guy out with the purple gatekeeper and now has a really good refresh cat mats before end game as well as a new fizz sets him up perfectly and of course, because it's Peterbot, he's being very active and he's going to get even more elims as well by fighting people that box next to him. Now, as we get into moving zones, of course, Peterbot is in an insanely good position just from getting those elims, but he's actually not in, you know, an ideal spot. This is actually a pretty tough rotate. Main reason being is he's on a really congested side. There's like four people right next to him. And of course, there's a bunch of people that could potentially hold him on his next rotate. So what should you guys do whenever you're in a tough spot and there's kind of like a high chance that you can die on a rotate? And the simplest answer is just to invest Matt. So take a look at what Peterbot does. He realizes, okay, this isn't a good rotate. There's a load of people around me. I don't have too many options. So let me just take high ground on first moving and he's obviously not going to try to hold high ground but he just takes high ground completely for free because nobody's going to be you know be crazy enough to contest this height and what he does very simple pretty cheap base as well and he uses like 12 brick builds as well as a bit of metal right there to get up and now he's in a really good position he's in the best position possible to get kills as well as rotate just for using 13 builds as you can see and of course, all these other people aren't going to be an issue for him on his rotate, which is so important. He taps his fizz and now he starts looking for a kill. And he's very also just diligent about tapping his fizz over and over. So he can rotate whenever he chooses. He gets two free kills right here with the mythic orc and just having good aim. And now what he does, does the little ramps towards front side, taps the fizz while walking up on the ramps. And then even more ramps, just this really simple strap like uh, Bushy was doing in my last video, just true luxing, ramping up towards the server, giving yourself more time, more height, more front side potential with your fizz. And then to go front side again, what he does very smartly is he pauses on a high layer. He's not trying to commit fully front. It's much better to pause on a high layer like he does right here, rather than going down to low ground front side, because this layer is going to allow him to rotate onto a high layer and potentially even take height in a second. Generally such a good rotate. And he's made it look so simple. He's only used 25 builds so far and he's getting an insane amount of damage as well. Okay, so next up, guys, how does Peterbot get refreshes? Obviously, he's not in the most shambles position possible, but you should always be trying to get refreshes and solos just so you can get heal off and things like that at this point in time. So how does he get these refreshes? I'm not going to lie, guys. This is going to be a lot of information within like 20 seconds of gameplay. It's been like two minutes of me talking. So make sure you pay attention. So the first thing that he's doing is he's getting onto this position right here called the red line of zone, right? So what he's going to do is he's going to tarp into this red line of zone. So you can see he's got edit control and if I just pause for a second, everybody in the server, apart from these like five people up here, have to run over and through his edit control. So the position that he's put himself in, having a box here and a box down here, means he has edit control on so many tiles as people come towards him, right? So as you can see, he's got edit control all around here, all these tops, even if there was a guy to like pause here or to pause here, he has the edit control and he can start fighting for a refresh. And the next thing that he does very smartly is he finds a perfect target. And the perfect target normally isn't somebody that's like, 
you know, next to you. It's going to be an awkward fight. Instead, it's somebody above you because it's easier to fight from below for refreshes, in my opinion. Since, you know, it's a bunch of plays you can do, like, drop down plays. As well as he makes sure to get all the edit control around the build. So now, look, he's got three boxes. All of his edits. I think he should probably use some hards here, but it's, I think it's fine. And then he starts replacing the guy and trying to get that refresh. Unfortunately, though, he doesn't get this refresh. The guy gets out the box and he does a really nice peek to stop this guy fighting him. Look at this godly peek. The double six tile edit to sort of peek into the guy from across the box. Really smart play. And then he isn't able to find the refresh. Unfortunately, even if you do everything right, even if you make, you know, the perfect boxes down on low ground, even if you get on that red line where all the people are running past you, you're not always going to find a refresh. So the simplest refresh hack that you can do is listening for this audio cue right here. You guys hear it? I mean, hopefully you heard it. It's a little bit more visible when you're actually playing in game. But what that audio cue is, is when somebody dies... Obviously, their loot drops on the floor as well, but there's this little bot that spawns, this little drone that takes them back to the lobby. And this has been in the game for seven years, and people still don't know how to use this drone to their advantage. Listen for this little bot, because it means that you're going to get a double refresh. You're going to catch somebody unaware, picking up loot, picking up medkits, trying to heal up. Maybe this guy's low HP, he is, right, from fighting a second ago. Even with Siphon in the game, it's always worth doing it. And especially when you've got a load of edit control, you'll be able to get free refreshes like that. Then what Peter does is he aggroes forward and he's very cautious to get the edit control. He's not just jumping into a 50-50, so he's not taking damage. And look what he's able to do. He catches somebody else doing the same thing. He plays the right-hand peak and he gets a triple refresh. Genuinely the best refresh you can get. So one body worth of loot and then two bodies worth of loot in here. And of course, he makes sure to make sure all the edits are secure. He resets his back wall, has a nice edit here that he can block. He does an armored on his top to be safe. He replaces this wall as an armored there absolutely perfect stuff to get that triple refresh and he only got one kill but he gets three bodies worth of loot which is so important so many nice things that he did in that little you know 20 seconds of gameplay you know red line having edit control having space to go for a kill as well as listening for people dying near you and then using your edit control to actually force that fight and he gets an insane amount of loot gets the med kits and now he's in a perfect position to win this game Right, so now the P-Bot has got his refresh, let's talk about how he actually wins the game. And the key thing, whenever you get a refresh in solos, is, especially if it's a triple refresh, which is, you know, the best type of refresh you can get, is you have a mass advantage over the player up on high ground. So Jack's right here, 66 builds, he's been doing a good job of holding height, not using the insane amount of bats, but you can't really get refreshes when you're up on height. So whenever you get a mid ground or a low ground refresh, immediately think about how you can take height. So let's watch what p does. Here what does he comes out the side of his box very important he's not just editing out the top or you know editing straight towards the server he's going out the side so it's hard to get beams that he comes out then he's getting up high layers while getting towards front side he's going to scout out high ground as you can see looking through his floors you can also do the the tasting box where you look through a stairs a little bit easier but you know having a two bar like this is completely fine and he spots that high ground is you know pretty shambles they're not established they're not connected they're not in the best position this guy starts getting fought backside he's trying to get a refresh himself so what does Peter Bot do he taps his fizz and he's He's going to go up on high ground very simple and you've got to remember he also knows he's got a mat advantage here so using that mat advantage is important but you don't just want to crank away like 500 match trying to get up on height it's much more important that you do effective chops so he does the side jump with a fizz to get a little bit of damage has the wall control now he does a nice little chop and he gets a free kill and he prioritizes of course getting the mats always prioritize picking up the mats she missed a bit of wood right there but he does double back and get the fizz which is a really good place. And then he's got a full fizz to maintain height. And he's going to very effectively hold height with a you know pretty cheap amount of mats. So what he does to hold height is he does this DC ramp where you ramp up like this. And then you give yourself a nice little peek down onto people behind you. So you can't get flanked as well as it's quite hard to get chopped because you're such good angles. Like look at the angles he's got on the server right here to you know be aware of where people are chopping him from. And now, even though he does get chopped, he knows exactly who chopped him and who to focus. So you can see he's going to fully focus on this player that chopped him. He gets himself 200 just in case he gets fought. And he keeps doing this ramp strat, keeps on pressuring the player who's chopping him, makes this guy have a really tough time. If there's somebody active looking for high ground, you need to absolutely just bitch them off it and just spam them as much as possible. So they can't even have a chance of looking up at your height. Exact same thing. Really good high ground hold right here. Just doing these ramps, making sure you're giving yourself a good peek, making sure you can't get flanked. Really good stuff by him. And he's also very just active when he's up on high ground, using his all. You should never stop shooting your AR until you run out of ammo, in my opinion, when you're up on height. Because otherwise, other people are going to be able to look up at you and it's going to be a very hard time for you winning the game. 
because of course you're going to get chopped and use even more mats than you should. Now, as we get into final moving right here, there's six players left and Peter Ball gets beamed for a lot of damage. And he's in a very tough spot right here because even though it might look like he's got a decent amount of builds because everybody down low ground is just fought and the sort of the whole lobby is just fragged out. The people down low ground actually have more materials than him and he's obviously low HP as well since he hasn't got any Scythe or anything like that. So what he has to do is maintain high ground while being very cheap. So how he does this is doing this stair right here. It's more important to do a stair here than a wall because the wall's easier for people to chop for the guy down below. And he also goes ahead and there's a very nice play, which is basically just full flooring this guy off. He does leave this open for a second to see if he can get a shot. And then he reseals it just to not trade damage. You don't want to trade damage when there's still multiple people alive because, you know, the other guy who's full HP is just probably going to win. And now he starts layering down. And he knows he has to be active on these other players because he doesn't want them to fight and kill each other. And then that guy would obviously have Siphon. They'd be stacked on mats. It'd be a very tough 1v1. He wants to be active on taking out these players. And that's exactly what he does. He takes out this guy after taking a pump on him. And he immediately starts fighting the other player. Knowing this is the guy that he just damaged a second ago. Knowing that this guy probably has more heal off than him. He immediately starts fighting him. And he takes him out. And he wins the game. And that wasn't the most crazy win of all time. But that is just what happens when you have solid fundamentals. You're active at looking for kills. You got like that crazy triple refresh. And then you just did a really textbook front side height take. Took the guy out on backside by doing a nice little chop out. And then had a very easy win from there. If you guys enjoyed this sort of in-depth uh, insight into players winning games and solos, go check out the Solos Masterclass, as well as go check out Solo Superstars if you're interested in getting coached by me, as well as all the coaches I mentioned earlier. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in a bit.